So I wanted to share this really beautiful experience that I had today um, where I was asked to facilitate a guided meditation um, on the beautiful red rocks of Sedona with Prima Love and she is an artist that I have brought into many sacred ceremonies. So being asked to facilitate with her in this way and um, bringing to life things that I've been like dreaming about for <laughs> so long. Yeah, I guess it's silly to think of, but um, today was seriously like even in the middle of the meditation, I just like looked up at the sun and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. I audio recorded the guided meditation where I was leading the group through the meditation and she was playing and singing and in the middle of it, this woman brought out a violin and just starts playing and I'm just like, what is life right now? And this all started on Thursday when like, I was at work, and for those of you that don't know, I've been working a regular job, running a group home, um, and it's, yeah, I my business pretty much is non-existent since the whole Egypt fiasco, and basically, um, yeah, my whole entire business crashing and burning, and me not coming up from the ashes yet with that. Yeah, it's sad, but I don't really get to give my gifts in this way very often anymore. And so I was at work and normally I don't get onto Facebook. Normally I don't even look at group messages, but for some reason I checked my Facebook while I was at work and it was so divinely orchestrated. And I see this flyer for, um, like a gathering with Prima Love and she was doing an album release party. And I said, oh my God, I love her. I wish I would have known about this because it was in Sedona and I work in Flagstaff. And um, one of my mutual friends said, you know, well, it's not till tonight. And then I realized Prima Love had posted the flyer in the group chat. And so I went to my daughter because she was working with me, she volunteers oh, at the I went home. and I asked my daughter if she'd want to go down to Sedona after we got off work and go to this album release party. And she was so excited. She's like, yeah, I miss Sedona so much. And she hasn't been to Sedona since she moved in with me. And, you know, she's a teenager, so... She hasn't really been into these kinds of things for a couple of years. You know, she was definitely what brought me into this when she was a baby. But then it was like not cool and, and grandma thought mom was all weird and woohoo-y. So she like distanced herself from it. Now she's coming back around. Uh, and the next day I had a 14 and a half hour shift. So I was like, uh, do I really want to drive down to Sedona? So we decided to go. I'm so glad that we did. And like me, I am, I know it's probably hard to believe, but I am pretty shy. Um, and so, and I'm like trying not to fangirl. And it's so crazy because I've met like so many celebrities. It, like, I'm not saying she's a celebrity, but I normally don't get like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I normally, I just don't. But, I think because her music came to me in such a in such a like a hard time and it allowed for me to like dance through this just really intense transition that I was going through in my life and and so it just it meant so much more to like meet her and a part of me like literally waited until the last moment after we were done with the whole entire um album release party and ceremony it was a very intimate setting it was beautiful and i've been experiencing my daughter like coming back from just accumulating a lot of trauma not living with me um 
for the last four years. And it's been this process of like not taking it personal when she lashes out, needing to get my stuff together like very quickly so that I could support us both. And it's it's definitely been a recalibration, I would say. So as we sit in ceremony and and then she starts to and I just start to feel like layers and layers just shedding off of my daughter. And it was a beautiful ceremony and as she was singing, she would sing a verse and then she would ask us to sing the verse back to her, like mantras. And then like midway through the ceremony, um, my daughter just like holds my hand and then like falls into my lap. And I hear, you gave her birth in the physical. Now it's time to birth her in the spiritual. I'm like, wow, what a blessing. What a blessing that would be because, you know, normally our children have to fall away from us to come to God, right? As we're going to leave, I'm just like, okay, screw it. Like, I'm, I'm going to go say hi to her and it was so awkward. Maybe just for me <laughs> because I don't know. I'm just like weird about meeting new people. Me as a human being meeting a new person. <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm just off. I introduced myself and she grabbed my hand and she said, right away, I felt like you were my sister. And I was like, well, thank you. That means a lot to me because your music came to me in a very difficult time period in my life. And she was like, what is it last year when I was here in Sedona? And I was like, no, I didn't even know you were here last year. Turns out, like, I found her in January of, of last year, and she ended up coming in, like, August or September to perform. And then my daughter starts to speak, and she's, like, grabs her hand, and she's, like, I just want to thank you so much because this ceremony helped me heal some really deep wounds that I experienced with my father. And I just want to thank you. And she starts bawling. And then I start like crying, but I'm also trying to like hold I this. I think it was the next morning. Uh, she reached out to me directly. Prima loved it. And she was like, it was so beautiful to connect with you. I would love for you to come to this goddess ceremony that she was having on today. So my daughter said, because she was on her way to work with me, she's been volunteering at my work a lot lately. And um, she was like, she invited us, we have to go. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, if she wants to go to a goddess ceremony, I'm totally in support of that. Yeah, there was just going to be some other facilitators there uh, doing guided meditation while she was singing. And they, there, I think there was two or three of them, and they all were not able to come. And so the previous version of me, would be too shy to be like, um, I could do it, <laughs> you know, um, for fear of being rejected or whatever. And instead I was like, uh, if nobody's here to do the guided meditation with you, I would love to facilitate with you. And she was like, okay, awesome. And so she told me to come and sit next to her. Um, I asked her if I could audio record it. She was fine with that. And then as we got going, it was just, it was such a magical experience. And it filled like a part of my soul that has, has been crying out for a sacred experience like that since, you know, I thought that that's what we were going to go do in Egypt. And then it ended up being just a horrible, horrible traumatic experience that um that I pray to come out on the other side of one day but also there's been this part of me that has been like nope don't talk about past lives don't try to be anything but Kendra you know like I I definitely got reprimanded for hiding behind, you know, who I've been in past lives or whatever. And it's like, that's not 
what we're here in this embodiment, this incarnation for. We're here to be, you know, the closest thing to divinity as we can, like, humanly possibly get to. And, um, and that's not hiding behind, um, like a goddess or a deity it's about really embodying that in this life and like bringing that forward and who is that right. as we were going through I don't know if she said it while we were in the meditation or just like right away afterwards but um she started saying wow I feel the presence of Mary Magdalene so strongly and wow I feel the presence of Mary Magdalene unlike anything I've ever experienced before just like thanking God in that moment for like showing me that I don't need to say anything. I can just show up and be the truth of who I am and people are gonna feel that. And being in that devotion and that service for God is like, it's all that we're truly here for. And in every moment we're being asked to to bring that and um and then she was like asking the women um to do a baptism in in the water there was a waterfall which is something i always talk about in my meditation so is having... like can i get somebody to hold the other side because we're we'd opened up this golden gateway and as we were doing the baptism, she wanted somebody to assist I her. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll assist you for sure. And um, as we started to do the baptisms, I was just like, oh, my God. Because, like, two years ago, I started doing baptisms in Grasshopper, where, which is a part of Oak Creek. And we were in Oak Creek. And, and here I am with this woman who this artist who I've brought into sacred ceremonies while I was doing baptisms and here she is and we're facilitating this together and she keeps saying I feel the presence of Mary Magdalene and she said I see these visions of her as she carried on Christ's teachings after Yeshua ascended and then this one woman it was her turn and she said she said i don't feel right about this i feel a lot of resistance she's like it's my religious you know like programming that's telling me like you're not allowed to just have anybody baptize you and all of these things right and i'm like oh well i'm a minister like i'm legally and spiritually allowed to baptize you does that help and so she was like yeah it actually does and then she sat with it for about five minutes and she let it resonate with her. And then she was like, yeah, I want, I want to do this. And as we put her underneath the water, like it was so powerful. Like I, I felt things falling off of me. And then, um, before all of this, when we were setting the intentions, when we opened up the circle, um, it got to my daughter. <clears throat> and there's an astrologer that I listen to often and she keeps talking about how my child might get pregnant and then it's also in her sign this pregnancy and I always like look at her and I'm like you better not get pregnant like you're not allowed to get pregnant and my daughter says my she tells the story and she's like I think I realize now that the pregnancy isn't about me giving birth to a baby. It's about it's me about rebirthing myself. And then I like start crying because that's the message that I got. And so then I shared that with the group. And so when it was my daughter's turn, it just allowed the Holy Spirit to flow through me from God and flow into her. And she came out and then a couple hours later, she's like, you know what, mom, I think I'm going to be a vegan, which is actually the best for her blood type. And I had just talked to my mom about this earlier that morning. And um, I'm not pushing being a vegan. I'm not even a vegan. 
but it was just like it was so beautiful to see the shifts in real life and how nobody was there like trying to pretend and there was you know I've been in some goddess circles where it's like oh get a video of me doing this and you know so for this I don't have any videos oh actually I do have one video so the other night I have um one of my favorite songs from her is called humble reverence and I've danced to it on my channel and it just it's one that like always speaks to me. And so she had put away her guitar and I didn't hear the song. And I just asked her, which is something I wouldn't normally do because again, I don't I don't wanna overstep, but I don't wanna like, you know, she'd already put her guitar away. So I normally wouldn't ask and then I would regret it, right? And so I just asked her if she would sing that song and she did and she let me film it. And she sounds exactly like she does on the record, which is doesn't happen. And there was also this woman and she said she was from Montana. And I was like, oh, my God, we're from Montana. And she's like, I know Megan told me. And I was like, where are you from? And she's like, Great Falls, which is where we were from, where I was born. And it's just like it was so many divine reflections. It's like we are all one on a different timeline. And um, even though Sedona can be can be a place where it's like people are basically putting on spiritual theater and you know playing a role, it also has the ability not to this have depth and this love and this this natural like humble reverence for the divine and that's something that i don't feel here um, where we're living now in flagstaff there is so much more for the kids which is why we moved here it is so much colder here <laughs> which i don't know if i'll ever get used to and I do, I do love my job and I do feel like I'm making a difference. I do feel like I need to get a lot done in a little bit of amount, of, like a little amount of time. I feel like I've been sent there for a reason to help them quickly. I just wanted to share this because I am going to share the guided meditation and I am going to share her singing humble reverence because it's amazing and I want you guys to be there with me and the guided meditation when my aunt listened to it she was like oh my god it's amazing I truly believe that the more of us that hear something like this the more of us rise together and I do know that I'm walking this path with you and so there's probably something in your life that you've like a part of you that you've been cutting yourself off from. And it's so close to like the core of who you are that it's just made you feel angry or tired or like life has like this lackluster-ness feeling. And so I just invite us to remember that part of us and bring that with us even in the most mundane or monotonous tasks that we have in our daily life. And just know that I love you. I love you all so very much. I'm so sorry if I've let any of you down. I promise you that I have been harder on myself than any of you could ever be on me. And I pray to come back fully one day. But I don't know what that's going to look like, and I am fully surrendered to following my guidance and knowing that right now it's time for me to be in this 3D and really face the parts of me that I was running from. Um, 
running from parts of my past that um, hindered me from, you know, getting regular jobs and, and just facing that and fixing it and putting it to rest and knowing that when we leave these anchor points, inevitably it pulls us down. And so it's important for us to like bravely step into the light with all of our shadows and just not to surrender that fear or to do it even when you are afraid. So I hope that helps some of you and I hope you enjoy this meditation. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm not mic'd or anything fancy. It's just my phone on the ground. And um, maybe it will help if you listen with headphones. And I'll share the video of Prima Love singing Humble Reverence. So I love you all, and I hope you're having an amazing Memorial Day weekend.